Now, we've been led into a society where all creative potential has been removed from the human condition, where you're simply not going to be allowed to think anything that the government doesn't want you to think. So, therefore, you're not going to be able to create anything the government doesn't want you to create. We're going to see no development of genius, no development of free expression, no development of new forms of art, new forms of anything. You know, it's kind of like the human race getting in this position where you think, oh, look, we've already done it all now. There's nothing new that could possibly be invented. I actually said this back in the 1800s and the 1900s. That we've done it all now. There's nothing new could possibly be invented. And look where we are now. You know, so, but you're taking all this away from the human condition. You're taking all type of personal input away from people's lives by moving them into this digital reality. But it really does begin to go a long way to explaining why we are moving so far away from that with everything that we're doing with this digital reality that's being rolled out. The question is, how do we stop it? Now, how do we stop it? Well, half of the battle, folks, is, as I've said, making people aware of the information, just helping people become aware of the information, talking about things, asking questions. And when politicians roll out this legislation, we don't actually just have to go along with it. We could say no. And if they say, well, no, you're not able to do that, we're going to make you do it, well, we'll form our own societies and we'll do things our own way without them. We don't need to participate in their reality if we don't want to, folks. That's the thing. You know, there is a choice. The problem is that people just don't believe they have one because they have no faith in themselves and they have no real respect or rapport with the people around them. So if they do step outside the box, they're afraid no one's going to step outside of the box with them. And generally nobody will because they've never developed these relationships with the people around them. They've never put common unity into their community, which is something that I've been suggesting for the last 12 years. It's kind of interesting looking at all this, you know, because... All of the solutions that we've got, I mean, these are things that I suggested 12 years ago when I first came on air, 11 or 12 years ago, and now I see the situation the world is in now, and if people had put these plans into effect back then when I first suggested that they do it, if they'd got themselves self-sufficient and put gardens in when I suggested they had, if they had developed rapport with the local community around them, built that respect for the people around them so they could all stand up together now, then they would be a force to be reckoned with. But it's got to the point now that you know, we're back kind of at the wall, folks, and we've got to put this into action now, and we've got to stand up and make our voices heard, or we're just going to go the way we're going, you know, and we're going to end up in the direction that we're headed. You know, and if we can't stop this, and we are just going to be rolled into this digital reality, then what we're going to have to do is try to find ways of maneuvering ourselves within it where we can still maintain some sort of sense of freedom. I think the easiest way to do that, folks, would be to get out of the cities. You're certainly not going to have much of a sense of freedom if you're still living in a city once all of this comes online. And why it's become so difficult for us to get any focus on these things, why it's so difficult for us to even comprehend these things now, to comprehend these ways of thinking, simply because we're not taught these ways of thinking. And I would suggest also because we've had our language changed to the degree that we're not able to convey spiritual understandings to people anymore. We're not even able to convey them to ourselves because we think in terms of language and we don't have the words within our language to explain the spiritual concepts we're trying to understand, to explain the inner feelings we have, the inner psychological makeup that we have the deep connection that we feel to things, that something that is there that we don't know how to explain, that we all have. We all have this feeling. And again, it's because we think in language. And the words to explain these things, I would suggest, have been removed from our language very, very deliberately. But looking at what we've got now in relation to what we had and looking at the way this culture is being moulded it becomes very, very interesting because you can see that there is a deliberate dumbing down and removal of any type of real spiritual connection that's being carried out against the people of this earth now on a mass scale. It's happening right around the world. Simply by the shifting of priorities within people, the shifting of perspectives within people, and the subtle and gradual changing of people's language. This is having a huge impact on people as well. I think the change in people's language is extremely important. Because as I said, if you change people's language and you remove certain words from their language that explains certain spiritual concepts, then how can they even ever understand these concepts? How can they even be aware that these concepts exist? How can they ever understand the inner feelings that they have if there are no words to describe them? 
you know, it's happening right around the world. Everybody is drawn to this sort of place and everyone is drawn to the flash and pizzazz of technology and it is the technology that's leading us into this dystopia. And it's happening everywhere. It's happening in the jungle. It's happening in third world countries. You can go to the jungle in Peru. You can go to the Philippines. Go to some of these incredibly poor cultures. And kids may not have a decent home to live in. They may be living in a tin shelter or whatever, but they'll still have the latest cell phone. And they'll still judge you by what sort of model cell phone you have. You know, they generally judge people by the tech. And through the tech, they are drawn to places with the brightest lights and the brightest technologies. They're all drawn to Hollywood, that sort of Hollywood mentality anyway. And they're all drawn into this system. We've seen a huge breakdown even in the family units in places like the Philippines through the technology. They've done it differently in our cultures. They did it gradually. They had to do it gradually you know, through the breakdown of the family unit through the 30s, 40s, 50s and 60s and leading us into the generation gap and all the stuff they've done. But once it was all in place in Western cultures, all they really needed to do was introduce that mentality and introduce the technology into third world cultures to be able to lead them into it a lot quicker than the way they did with us. And they kind of practiced with us and they got the methodology worked out and they got it refined, but once it was refined and they had the technology in place, all you need is the tech to be able to put it in place in other countries. This is why when you go around the world, you, know, you go to the third world, you notice the third world is around about 20 or 30 years behind the Western world, but it isn't just in the development, it's also in the mentality and the technology and even the toys the kids are using. Getting people away from the tech long enough for them to realise this is the problem. If people could just pull their eyes away from the television, pull their eyes away from their cell phones, pull their heads out of this economic model that they're forced to comply with all the time. You know, people are so busy running on the treadmill that they just don't get time to look around them. And even when they do have time, they don't want to look around them. They don't want to know. They just want to have some time to relax because... Most people are too terrified to find out what's really going on in the world because if they know, it may mean that they have to do something about it. And if they don't do something about it, well, they might feel a little bit uncomfortable about themselves. And they don't want that. They just want it all to go away. Just leave me be. Let me get through life. I'm in a position where this works for me. Leave me alone. That is unfortunately the attitude of most people. But they don't realize that the reason they feel that way is because life is a grind and it's getting harder and it's getting harder and harder. So they need to maintain focus so they can get through. But it's just going to keep getting harder and harder because they think that they need to maintain focus so they can just get through. When if they stopped and said, hey, I've just realized we don't actually have to do any of this and that the world is run by criminals and all of the hardship I'm suffering is being done by design, then they would find that they actually can get through. You know, it's people's unwillingness to look at the reality of the world, which is really causing a huge part of the problem. And if people would simply tear their eyes away from the grind and, and realize the beauty of themselves and the power that they have to actually change things, we could change things. And that's been the frustrating part through all of this, through the shows over the years, is just seeing how simple it would be to change the world and how ill-prepared many people are to do it. That's all I've ever done, folks, is try to encourage people to do that. Try to encourage people to be themselves, to discover themselves, and to stand up for themselves. And all I can do is offer you perspectives, and hopefully it will lead towards that goal. And that's been my main agenda and my main objective since starting this show 11 or 12 years ago, folks, just to help people find themselves, because once they do that, they can really discover what freedom means. And once they do that, then we can all be free, and won't that be a wonderful place to be? As I often said, folks, I just want to be free, and I can't be free until you're free. And so I do everything I can to try to encourage that within people.